Now we are going to cover a command called Hull Wizard. But before we do that, go into a new sketch and create a rectangle and extrude it any height. And you'll have the same part you see on your screen. If you don't want to do that, you can simply go into your Working Files folder and open the part file named Hull Wizard. But again, this is nothing more than a rectangle extruded. So let's begin. I am going to activate the whole wizard command and the property manager opens. Notice we have two tabs, one for the type of hole and one to position the hole. We'll begin with type. As we scroll through the property manager, at first glance, it looks to be overwhelming. But there's no need to be overwhelmed because a lot of the settings that we choose early on propagate the fields lower in the property manager. Let's begin with hole type. In SolidWorks 2014, SolidWorks updated these nine graphics. Before SolidWorks 2014, these were nothing more than 2D pictures. Also, in SolidWorks 2014, we have three new hole types. We have counterbore slot, countersink slot, and slot. We're going to begin with counterbore. Now once we select the hole type counterbore, we then need to select the standard. We are going to go with ANSI metric. Next will be the type of fastener. And we're going to go with the hex head cap screw. Right below this under hole specifications, we need to choose the hole size. And we're going to select an M30. And then we have the fit. Our choices are normal, close, or loose. And this goes back to your drafting standards for the type of fit, class one, two, or three type of fit. We're gonna go with normal, which is a class two. The next item in the property manager is end condition. Many of these you'll recognize. Blind, through all, up to next. We're gonna go with through all. And then we have options. These fields are populated based on what we selected above. We're going to leave these options as is and then switch over to the position tab. Now under the position tab I can either select a single face and then position the hole multiple times along that face or if I select a 3D sketch button I can position that hole on multiple faces. I am simply going to select the top face and as soon as I do that my pointer turns into the point tool, which allows me to specify a point to position the hole. Now notice as I move my cursor, I can position additional hole features. I'm gonna instead hit the escape key and then view normal to the face. And at this time, I can apply geometric relations and smart dimensions for the hole position. So we'll apply a dimension of 75 and another dimension of 100. I'll close out of dimension, close out of the whole wizard property manager, and notice we have a counterboard feature. Now let's take a look at the feature manager tree. We have the feature for whole wizard, but if we expand it, we have two sketches. The first sketch is for the whole position. If you want to change the whole position, simply edit the sketch. The second sketch is for the profile or the shape of the whole feature. Do not edit this sketch. Instead, edit the feature and make your changes through the property manager. So you can edit the sketch for the whole position, but don't edit the sketch for the whole profile. Let's create another whole wizard feature. This time, we're going to go with a straight tap. Once again, our standard is going to be ANSI metric. We'll use a bottoming tapped hole. And this time, we're going to use a size of M36 by 3.0. We want it to go through all, and the same with the thread. Now, right below this, under options, we can simply have a tap drill diameter, or we can have a cosmetic thread, or no cosmetic thread. We're going to go with cosmetic thread. I'm going to go back to the top of the property manager, select the position tab, go out to the screen, select this face, and position it. 
I'm going to close out of the whole wizard command. And when I zoom up on this, notice we do not see any threads. Now the reason for that is in the options, cosmetic threads is not turned on. So let's go up to the options. The dialog box appears in the screen. We'll change the document properties tab. Go to detailing and you want to verify cosmetic threads is checked along with shaded cosmetic threads. Select OK. And now notice we see cosmetic threads in that hole. Now these are nothing more than a graphic representation of threads. And in SolidWorks we call these cosmetic threads. These are not true threads cut into the cylinder of that feature. They're nothing more than a graphic representation.